Got some water? Anybody have water? Okay. Hey. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the July 15th town council meeting in town hall for the first time in 17 months since February of whatever year that was. <laughs> One of them years. Okay. Um, so we'll, we'll begin. I'll, I'll begin just by saying I'm happy to be here and happy to, that everybody else is here as well. Um, let me let the record read that the entire council to include the mayor are present. Um, at this time, let's all join in with a pledge of allegiance. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States. To the republic for which it stands. One nation. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, can I have a motion to approve the agenda? Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any ayes have it. Uh, at this time, I'll ask is there um, any public comment on anything on the agenda? Uh, yes, can I please? Hearing none, I'll move on. I, I'd like to. Me. I'll slow down. Can I comment? Hello? Hello? Yes. Hi. If you could state your name and address for the record, please. Hello? Yes, if you could state your name and address for the record, please. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I'm on the on the, my phone in the car, so I wasn't sure if you guys could hear me. Uh, Monique Lightheart, 7609B Street. Um, hi. Monique, um, I believe you live in Davidsonville, right? You probably need to yes. Davidsonville yeah, I live in Davidsonville, 3290 Green Ash Road, Davidsonville. So, um, so everybody knows, I think I've talked to a few people, reached out to a few people that I'm really in favor of Airbnbs. Um, I have two Airbnbs in, in um, Annapolis, in downtown Eastport. I went to all these council meetings last year. Um, and um, at first they were saying they wanted to keep it just to um, owner occupied, but you know, who wants to rent a house with toothbrushes and personal pictures and everything, you know, that's not that doable. So it's nice to have a mixture of some houses that are rented just for short-term vacation rental. Um, and it benefits the city. And so we, we went through a year of meetings and finally they decided that yes, it would be fair to allow some uh, Airbnbs and you go through an application process. Uh, now they're in the middle of trying to make rules and regulations and do special exception licenses. So everybody who has a license is grandfathered in now. Um, I have two and, um, but they're looking into special exception licenses, which is, done very successfully in North Beach. Um, they, um, they, you do an inspection there, home inspection, and then they um, tell you you're gonna come up for a meeting um, and then they either allow or don't allow your, your special exception license. And what it does for the city is, it, you know, they collect um, taxes on you on the uh, income like hotel tax. Um, and then they also can regulate if this is an appropriate property, if there have been any neighbor complaints, if, um, if there's self-sufficient parking on the property, all those kind of things and all these rules and regulations that you as a council can, um, can put together and either approve or not approve a license. Um, Short-term rentals do bring revenue for small businesses like restaurants and um, small uh, shops. Um, Mama Lucia, as a lot of you probably know, is on the chopping block for auction, which is really sad. I talked to Maria a few times last year. She said income was only half during the summer, which normally carries her through. 
So I don't know if COVID has everything to do with it, but it would have been nice if she would have been able to get extra income, you know, from a few short-term vacation rentals who would have visited her place. I always have a lengthy description of all the local um, things to do in, in um, Chesapeake Beach and North Beach. Um, my a special um, exception hearing is coming up on July 19th for North Beach, but they were so friendly. They said, well, but don't let that stop you from renting your place right now. You know, I already did the home inspection. They gave me special cottage passes, four of them, uh, which uh, allows um, each pass is for four people. So one, one pass holder and then three guests. Um, so stop you right there, Monique. Yeah. Monique. Yeah. You have about 30 seconds. Okay, so anyway, so North Beach, you guys are considered the Twin Beaches. North Beach is doing this very friendly and very successfully, and they, they see a real need and a real benefit to it. So I just want the conversation to be open about short-term vacation rentals, because a lot of people do, um, looking at the surveys that have been done, um, it seems like well over 50% are in favor or don't care or you know, so I think it's a conversation that we should keep having and, and find a win-win. You know, I, I'm not for a win-lose. I like win-win. You know, I want everybody to be happy. That's how I operate. So thank you for your time. I appreciate it, uh, Mr. Mayor and all the council members. I appreciate all you do. Thank you. Comment. Uh, I don't know why it's doing that. But... So I'm going to be speaking all night. Hi, uh, I also have a public comment, Carl okay, Warner. If, sorry, Carl, if you could uh, state your name and your address for the record, please. Sure, it's Carl Horn. I live at 3573 Savignon Lane. That's in Chesapeake Beach, just not in the uh, town limits. Right outside. Hey, Carl, you live outside of Chesapeake Beach. Well, my, yeah, right. My, my mailing address is Chesapeake Beach, but I am outside the town. Um, and, um, and, uh, Greg and Derek, uh, thank you for um, conversing with me about, um, I think it's uh, chapter 162 for uh, rental license requirements um, over the past day. I do appreciate that. And Greg, thank you for suggesting that I come and make a comment here. So I actually just found out about this rental license requirement. And now I'm sure that you guys put it on the web page and all that kind of stuff. But the only way that I found out about it was when I opened my HOA portal earlier this week uh, to get some information from my HOA. Now, I'm glad that you guys did that. Um, may have been a good idea to do when maybe the um, regulations were passed. Uh, this is my concern. While I do not agree with the, the premise that Chesapeake Beach was not a livable community for renters and tenants, tenants prior to 2019, I can agree in concept that, yeah, we, sh we should, you know, uh, protect renters and, and tenants, right? I, I understand that piece. What I really have a problem with is this biannual inspection and $250 biannual fee. And why do I have an issue with that? Well, in the regulations that you guys wrote and the power that you instilled within the town, you guys already have enforcement abilities for this code you wrote. So we have a code, you have, you have the ability to enforce that code through a complaint process. My issue is why are we gonna punish, and by punish, I mean $250, gonna punish the, the, the uh, property owner, uh, de-incentivize um, investment in the community, increase rents for everyone, when maybe what we really need to do is deal with the, the poor and the minority of, of landlords who are not upkeeping their property. I don't think we've gone around this the right way. I think perhaps that the intent was good. Uh, and I, I, would, I would hope and I would suggest and I would ask, even though I'm not currently a voter by about 100 yards, um, that you guys could, could take a look at that maybe and, and, de and deal with it from an enforcement and a, and a protection perspective, right? And not from a sort of an obtuse, uh, bureaucratic and, and cost intensive process, which actually has a lot of downsides, right? We, we, we think we understand what the upside is that we're trying to protect renters, right? But, but we have quantifiable downside uh, of the current method. And I, I think there could be a lot more finesse uh, with meeting the goals. Thank you. Sure. 
Um, oh. Approval of the minutes of the June 17th town council meeting. It's gonna be a long night. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any ayes have it. Um, approval of the, yeah, I actually don't, don't need the microphone probably. Uh, uh, approval of the minutes of the July 6th special town council meeting. Move to approve. There a second? Second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any ayes have it. Approval of the minutes of the July 6th work session. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any ayes have it. Approval of the minutes of the July 6th closed session. Move to approve. Second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any ayes have it. Okay. Thank you, council. Uh, next, we'll go to um, town administrator's uh, report. We've uh, we, we, we've read Holly's uh, report. I'll begin with Derek if we have any any questions of the town administrator. And I'm going to go in the same order we always do. Keith, after you. All right. Thank you. I do. Uh, Holly, in your report, you shared a meeting you had with State Highway uh, regarding two of our grant applications. Could you? Talk a little bit more about that. And in particular, what I guess what I'm looking for is did anything significant come out of the meetings or do we have any uh, a feel for our opportunity to get those grants and, and timing and anything else that may have come out of those meetings? Yes. Um, so we had a, a meeting with State Highway regarding our applications, and I think it was a positive meeting. They had a lot of questions about our wrap up of the 30 percent design uh, for the safe routes to school. Um, I, I feel that we have a, a good chance of receiving the funding for the 100% design and construction drawings. Um, and they did actually have a lot of questions about another project uh, that came forward with the Walkable Communities um, Advisory Group that we submitted. And it, it sounded that that was a project they had looked at in the past um, and seemed to be very interested in it. They had, they had some questions about the feasibility of it. Um, and we, we submitted for a feasibility study. Uh, to see what is um, would be the best path forward with that project. So I think overall we we finish uh, the meeting with a very positive feel for um, hopefully receiving some funding for both of those projects. Okay, that's great to hear. Yeah, that's my only question. Thank you. Yeah, you know I don't have a specific question about the report, but um, Holly and I were just chatting a little bit right before the meeting about some information she had shared with uh, Larry and I. Uh, about, um, I guess, kind of an energy audit at the mm -hmm. water reclamation treatment plant. And I had asked about um, one of the items in that, and she had shared some, what I thought was really good, great information. And I was just wondering if you would sure. mind sharing that with us all. Uh, yes. So uh, John Castro uh, had been working through an energy audit at the water reclamation treatment plant uh, and had determined that some of the energy rates there, uh, we probably could receive a better deal uh, going back to BGE commercial. Um, so we moved that account away from a supplier um, and got a better rate at the uh, BGE commercial division. So we're looking at all of our accounts now just to make sure that we have the best rate and BGE commercial is providing a very competitive rate. Yeah. And when you say a, a better rate, you're, you're talking like half the amount, right? Right. More yeah. than half. Yeah. So that was just, I thought, fantastic news. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Greg? Uh, yeah, I just had a comment uh, under events. Um, looks like the Taste of the Beaches 2021 is on. Um, and we're making plans for fireworks for that evening. Um, I know a lot of people are going to be really happy about that, and they'll be looking forward to that. Um, I'm, I'm happy about that as well. Um, I wanted to mention that I did a quick search and sunset that day is at 7, 10 PM. So I'm just thinking in terms of when we've traditionally had the event and in framing um, the fireworks around that event, it's just something to consider the sunset is 7, 10. So that probably means fireworks 7, 30 ish, maybe um, there's something to think about moving forward. Um, that, that's good information. My, my only comment. Thank you. Yeah. I hadn't even thought about that. That's, that's good. Um, <laughs> Larry, you definitely going to have to help me out tonight. Yeah, yeah sure. I'm going to need your help. Um, thank you. And uh, Greg obviously looked up my notes that I had here because I had basically the same notes, particularly the comment about the sunset that we need to plan around the fireworks for. And I'm really excited 
fingers crossed that we actually can hold the event again this year. This would be Taste of Beaches 4 for us. Um, back on the grants, I was going to just echo the uh, question on the Bayside Walkway and Overlook on how interested I personally am in that as I walk that way every day. And there's been a couple times when I've almost had to jump over the railing because right. the car is coming up on the shoulder. So I'm looking forward to getting that done. That's all I got. Thank you. All righty. Charlie? You guys know how prevalent this is in, in people's lives. Um, but I, think, I personally think we are doing a fantastic job as a town. Anything we can do to make sure we're pushing that message out is going to be helpful for all of us. Mm -hmm. so and I'm not saying we haven't done that, um, but that's definitely something that we're on. Um, so okay. um, good to see it here and let's make sure we keep it in the email blast. Zone. And I just had one on the third page. Um, the other guys have asked my other questions. Um, and I just wanted to notice that uh, the replaced Beach Elementary School, so is, the permit has been issued, right? The building permit? Yes, they're, they're moving forward on that, yes. And so this is new this month on this report. It wasn't there last month. So that's really quite big news that Beach Elementary is going forward. Mm -hmm. And that's fantastic. It's my only comment. Very well. Mayor, could I just make one comment? Please. Uh, just regarding the audio. Um, so if everyone could just make sure that they turn their mic on when they're speaking, we're having some not being able to hear. And the interference you're hearing is only when we're taking comment from outside. So it's echoing. So what we have to do is, is mute all of our mics and Sharon's doing that from the back so that we don't have the echo. So just wanted to explain. So, but, so you can definitely turn your mic on. That's not what call, what's causing the echo. I talk all the time, so I'll probably need my need my mic on, right? Yes, you can leave your mic on. Yeah. I Sorry, I don't talk all the time. <laughs> we'll get we'll get better at this. <laughs> okay, thank you, Holly. Um, public Public Works uh, report. We read Jay's report. Do we have any questions of Jay? If so, I'll begin with Dr. Bodine. Yeah, um, Jay. Um, oh, first of all, thank you for picking up the bags of debris that we got off the um, boardwalk. I think there were sure. probably eight to 10 bags completely full of vine clippings. So thank you for removing those. Um, sure. I wanted to talk about the heritage for just a second. One of the things that was in instituted quite a few years ago, a long time ago, was to ensure that we have backup pumps for each of our current pumps. And so I was wondering, on the heritage, it says the pump station is just about to complete. Um, have we thought about getting a backup pump if we don't have one, or is it something we sh should consider purchasing in the next fiscal year? Good questions. And yet we definitely considered that. So we, we spec this pump station, improved it, and it's actually built with a backup dry prime in place. So. Um, you're very familiar with how we had a third pump for every pump station. So that is our third pump for this pump station. So I feel we're in good shape with that. Can you hear me? I don't know if you can hear me anymore, but I lost audio on you guys. Jay, we can hear you. Thank you. Okay. No, I, no, have, I no, have no. Uh, Larry, no comment here, Jay. Great. Yes. Good evening, Jay. Good to see you almost. Uh, Thank you. A couple of things. Original station. Um, the sign at the entranceway I know has been problematic over the years. The one at the end of the median that faces the state road. It's leaning pretty badly. Um, if um, somebody could fix that. And there's a traffic sign that was the victim of some graffiti probably about six months ago at the circle at Sandsbury coming from Harrison Court to the to the uh, roundabout there that's missing. Um, probably would be wise to get that in place because people in Richfield Station need all the help they can get with navigating that roundabout. Um, and um, my other question was about the, um, the ball fields. It might be 
question for Holly, I'm not sure. It came up during the um, public columns uh, art committee meeting, and that's the, uh, the scoreboard there for the, that they use for the uh, sporting events there. They said that it hasn't been operating correctly for a couple of years. I know they didn't have a season last year, so it really hasn't been that long. But um, do we know anything about the problems with the scoreboard there? Can you hear me, Greg? Yes. I want to go back to, you mentioned a sign for six months has been missing, so I'm unfamiliar with that. Do you know what sign it is? It's a, it's a special sign uh, regarding navigating the, the roundabout there, and it's as you approach the circle from the intersection of Woodland Court and Harrison Lane there, um, you'll just, you'll see there's a, a post and the sign was removed because of the graffiti. Uh, and I know it's an unusual sign. It's not like a stop sign's off a shelf item, but that one there was it was navigating the um, uh, the roundabout. And it would probably be wise to make sure we put that one back up there. If we can. Uh, I'll I'll look into it, Greg. Maybe I can get with you, but I'm I'm not I'm not familiar with what you mean by a special like a yield or a circle sign. I'm just trying to make sure we're on the circle same page. Sign. Circle sign. Okay. That's, it helps people navigate that roundabout, and they need all the help they can get. Got it. Uh, and it, uh, I don't know if you were talking to Holly or not, but I'm not familiar with any deficiencies on the scoreboard. That's the first I've heard of it. I'm not saying it's not possible, but I'm not familiar with that. I'll look into it. I, I'm not. I haven't been aware of that either. That would be great to get that fixed for the city. They have a. Uh, milestone season this season, I think. I don't know what, maybe. Uh, and it would be great, um, you know, particularly with the focus on the Kellis Park there, um, to get that uh, operational for them, whatever it takes. But that was my only comment. Thank you. Sure. Thanks, uh, No comments or questions. Thank you. No comments for each other. Very good. Uh, Board of Reclamation Treatment Plan. Uh, no questions for me. Good to see you, John. To you all. No questions. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. Thank you, Larry. And thanks for pointing us in the right direction. Nothing for me. Yeah, just two things. Um, one, um, maybe it's already been shared, but if it hasn't, could Tom um, to get the energy management guys also? Yes, I, I think we can probably and get you that. And my second one was on the fourth paragraph, it talks about the PFAS chemical. And it says test results were received on July 5th, 2021. Reported to some administrators. I think they noticed that you actually were regarding uh, we've, we've sent those reports off to MDE, uh, and they had no concerns with, with the levels and said they were in line with other locations. Okay. Uh, and we will place those on the website as well. The more we can reiterate that, the better. You know, so I'll just keep asking the key mm -hmm. part of the reports for the PFA, uh, AF is not, we're tracking it, reporting mm -hmm. it, and doing everything that we can proactively. Um, 
something? Yes. Um, I'd like to introduce my assistant superintendent. Um, he's completed a six months probation, so he is a merit employee. Josh comes from the Calvert County uh, Water and Sewer. He brings ton of experience and knowledge, and he's going to be a big addition to the plant, moving this plant operations for the future. Josh, introduce yourself. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Josh Stent. Like John said, I've been working in this field for uh, actually 19 years, uh, beginning of August. So I uh, thank you all for giving me the opportunity to work here for the town. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Sir. Okay, thank you, John. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Correct. Every unit in there had, that has been inspected has paid the fee. I think we're about halfway through with Fishing Creek. Um, I don't know the other section you're speaking of. Can you be more specific? Fishing Creek, I believe we're about halfway through with. We might be talking, they might be the same community. We have the townhomes and then we also have the multifamily condo style units uh, back there. Yes, we they're they're all done exactly the same way, Greg. It doesn't matter whether it's a townhome or a or a single family dwelling or if it's a home that's rented. They're all inspected um, the same way with the same criteria by the same inspector. As a matter of fact. Okay. Um, thank you. You're welcome. No questions. Thank you. No thank you. Thank you very good. Thank you, Connie. Uh, You're welcome. Report. We've read Dale's report. Do we have any questions of Dale? And Greg, a couple questions. Um, apologize if you told us these things before. Um, Sixty-four million from. Um, Treasury, which I believe is that a uh, Maryland State Treasury or that's federal treasury to, to the Department state. Department of Treasury. Um, how much of that has been earmarked, or I guess the town made application for a certain amount? And I'm no. just wondering what that amount is. What happens is the state is making the determination of the amount that we'll receive, and they call them non entitlement units. There's a number of municipalities that are going through the state versus going directly through the Department of Treasury. 
and we should literally be receiving that check any day now. So I check the account daily and uh, they have told us by the 22nd, we'll receive it. The, the, yes. The check's in the mail, right? Yes. Um, what's the amount, do you know? We don't know. That'll be, okay. okay. We'll, we'll let the It'll be interesting. Okay. Um, and this, those funds, are they earmarked for anything in particular that we have to use them for? How, what's working with that? They gave us some broad guidelines, um, but in the Treasury has also printed a 151 page document that provides a lot of detail. Yeah. The good news is what I would say to town council is we have until the end of 2024 to decide how you want to spend them, and then 2026 to actually spend the funds. So we have time on our side. Uh, thank you. Uh, just building on that last question, I noticed the uh, comment on the uh, what fifth bullet on the funds uh, can be used to make necessary investments in water, sewer, or broadband infrastructure. I, I presume that we're already working on a wish list of things that we're going to spend that money on. So, okay. yes. thank you. Yeah. Charlie. Not to belabor this, but um, I had actually had a question. Uh, but until I saw the report, because I have a friend who's in uh, Richmond and uh, this money's real and mm -hmm. it, and it is somewhat of a gift if you want to or found money, if you want to think of it that way. Uh, but it's it's not a small amount and mm -hmm. it's it's real money that's going to come our way. So uh, I have nothing else exciting to add other than that in itself is pretty exciting. <laughs> so. Oh, yeah. So I'll start there on the bullet point five. Um it says the funds can be used for revenue losses as a result of the COVID-19 emergency. So at what point will Dale, will we get to know what those revenue losses are as we go through the audit or when? I would say after we do the reconciliation for fiscal year 21, because we're still coding some expenses from that year, but September timeframe. So when we do the reconciliation in mm -hmm. September, at that time we'll know what the losses were and what we may wish Correct. to replenish or cover those. Correct. That's the first part. The second part kind of goes hand in hand with um, what the other guys were asking. And it says they can be used to make necessary investments in water, sewer, and broadband. And so one of the things that we could use the difference from, whatever we don't use to cover the revenue losses that we experienced, could be the Highland Sewer Project. And um, that is something that fits into that, hopefully, that 2024 time frame. Um, and that way, whatever our costs are for the Highland Sewer Project, um, this could cover anything that we can do not to have a bond. And so I just wanted to bring that up. Um, next is we're in the July meeting. That we, means we started a brand new fiscal year, July 1st. And with what happens with July 1st in our general fund is, Dell. when are we debt free, no bonds, no debt in our general fund. September. That is That's when we make the last uh, payment for the general fund. So think about that for a second. We are a small town, small municipality in Maryland who will have our general fund debt free, no bonds in September. That ought to be applauded. That's amazing. We all did great work to get to that point. We ought to have a party. <laughs> Because yeah, as long as we uh, we will not be incurring any debt. Yeah, and That's that was right. for the DNR number seven seawall. Exactly for the last seawall, which was our last municipal bond payment or bond obligation. Mm -hmm. But um, um, I would just, I mean, everyone, you have to realize what this means, and y'all, you guys ought to be congratulated. I mean, with through real fiscal prudence, this council and this mayor and this administration has made our general fund debt free, and that is no small thing. And y'all to be, you know, really happy about this. Um, which kind of, yes, sir. Well, I'm four for eleven, so small is appropriate. <laughs> No, I'm just, I, I'm, it's like a real accomplishment that ought not to be minimized. Um, you guys vote on it, not just me. Um, so, you know, in that same vein, that's why I mentioned the high, Highland Sewer. 
um, project. We know it's coming. And if we think about, we can discuss it in the engineer's report. It was in Holly's report. We have the dredge coming up. And we know that we're paying for the dredge because it, once again, we were prudent. We had a line item called the dredge fund. We funded that line item consistently through the years. And now once again, we're gonna, if we had to spend up to $700,000 to do the dredge, and none of that money is coming from any other place, but money that we set aside for a specific long-term thing that we knew that was happening. And so that is really solid fiscal planning um, to not have to dig into any other funds. And once again, you, you guys should be commended for that. Um, that's really solid long-term planning. And uh, it just kind of like goes hand in hand. And I wanted to make sure that that wasn't minimized or glossed over as we start this new fiscal year. That's all I have. Thank you. Town engineer's report. Uh, we've read Wayne's report. Do we have any questions of Wayne? If so, I'll begin with you, Valerie. Yep, and let's just sit right. I lost all audio. And um, um, I think this is all really good that we're taking out of the, out of the dredge line. But just knowing, I'll keep reiterating it. I still have concerns that it doesn't account for the North City walls. Whereas you visit any friend in Woodward Key, where you stand at 1936, you can see the water cresting over that <coughs> northern jetty. It might not be providing as much sediment as the southern jetty walls, but just know that I still believe that it's a problem that as you move forward with whatever our next stretch is, um, four or five, six years from now, whatever that might be, and we have an opportunity to possibly re-engineer those so that we have a better hydraulic flow, I think it'd be well worth our time and well worth our money and effort um, to try to, in some manner, expand the time between dredges because of the sheer cost that it is to our taxpayers. And so really, um, I had a few other things, but that was really just a comment. Um, I was wondering if there's any, been any action on the Highland Sewer Study. Um, what is the next a action for whomever it is? I think at this point, Valerie, we're waiting for the uh, a funding of the grant or the MOU to be accomplished with the county. So at this point, we're kind of in a holding pattern, waiting, waiting for the, one of those two to, to, to be accomplished. Sounds good. And then, can you find a picture where it is? And I should know this, um, but I don't. Um, where's the Fishing Creek wet well located in town? Down near the near the, near the elementary school. <clears throat> down near the elementary school. Yep, down behind it. Okay, I'm sorry. For some reason, I, I drew a blank when I saw that. My only other question would be: I already told you about Beach Elementary. I think that's really cool that they got their permit and can start rocking and rolling. Um, and the town hall HVAC can probably be removed. Yeah, we can just remove that from the report. Um, yep, we'll that's do. Any comments? Charlie? Uh, no comments. Right. A couple of build on. I was going to ask also about the status on the IGA on Highland Sewer. Already answered that question. Delightful to be here enjoying the uh, Town Hall HVAC replacement. It's working great. And Way to hear. Uh, once, again, <laughs> once again, I'll just offer Wayne uh, any and John Castro any assistance on the uh, water reclamation treatment plant uh, laundry covers. If I can do anything to help, let me know. Thank you. Thank you. Will do. Thank you. Um, thanks, Wayne. Uh, any status on on the restarting of the building in Richfield Station? Um, we are still waiting for the developer to provide the public works agreement bonds and the, the executed uh, agreements, and then they can move to their, to their record plat and then proceed from there. I suspect it'll be another few months, Greg. There's a lot of um, large advantage to the developer to take care of all that stuff from striking with the irons high on the property. Awesome. That's right now. Okay. Um, 
I noticed just a comment in the heritage I saw where there was some review regarding sub base of, of sidewalks going in and I know it seems like a minor thing um, I'm in construction and we have suffered from a lot of defective uh, upper and builder construction of which good station uh, glad to see that holding your feet to, to the fire there and making sure the sub base is solid for to put the concrete down um, I just think that's a great thing um, and my other question could be Holly, but it's related to the wastewater treatment plant. The status of on getting compensated for those replacement chemicals that matter that it happened. That it was going to the insurance company or something. Mm -hmm. really? Not coming out of that. Yes, we're we're not going to receive refunds. For that replacement chemical. Well, what was the reasoning that they didn't feel it was their responsibility? Uh, we submitted it to their insurance carrier. Our town attorney handled that, and the I think the the legal cost to challenge that would be far too great. Okay. And I could I could have our town attorney draft a memo to town council to uh, explain that further. You don't need to do that just for me, but it's just I was just wondering about it because um, mm -hmm. I knew we were looking at that, and um, I think that we had felt that. That, uh, that carrier's responsibility there and they kind of fell down. I, I can tell you, I can tell you I, uh, I'll send an email out just so everybody knows exactly what the background is. Okay, well, thank you. That's fine. That's another question. Thank you. Thank you. Additional questions. Thank you. Uh, no questions. I already asked about the 261 sidewalk. But thank you, Wayne, for staying on top of that as well. Sure. Report. We've read uh, Alan Drew's report. I believe he's on the call. If we have any, any questions, I'll stay right there for uh, Thanks for joining us. Uh, I don't have any specific questions. I know uh, there's been a lot going on. I do appreciate uh, the prompt uh, responses and also the investigation of some of these. Uh, I know you guys have been pretty busy lately. So, so thank you. Thank you. Yeah, um, I do have one question. Just so there was a, an incident at the, the fast stop. I was wondering if uh, I think it was this month. It's not in the report for last month. I was wondering if you had any additional information to share on that. Yes. So uh, basically, that was a argument that took place between two men um, over a comment that uh, we had a suspect made to the victim's fiance. Uh, he, he said something inappropriate and the, the two men began arguing and the, the man who made the inappropriate comment pulled a knife and uh, severely wounded and in my opinion, almost killed the victim. Um, the suspect was arrested on the scene. He actually fled the scene and returned back why we had deputies still on the scene and he was taken into custody at that time. He is at the uh, Calvert County Detention Center held on no bond at this time. And we have uh, charges of attempted second degree murder on him for that. Um, the victim is recovering at home with um, a lot of stitches, maybe 50, maybe 70, 80 stitches. So he's in, in pretty bad shape of recovering. Thank you very much. I appreciate the additional info. Um, and uh, another question about uh, the robbery listed um, here, Kellen Steele. Is there, can you tell us more about that one? Well, it's my understanding that the victim spent some time on the uh, gambling machines at Abner's, or, or at least that's the claim at this point, and that he had... Um, he claimed that he had won some money, and I think that's in dispute right now, but but uh, he's saying that he walked home from Abner's. He was on his way home, walking across um, Kellum's Field in that area when he was approached by a couple men who uh, robbed him of his money and took off, and he uh, he continued home and then called us. So by, by the time we received the call, um, the suspects were gone. Um, I have been in touch with our detectives 
And there's some inconsistencies in the, the victim's statement from what I'm told. So it's still under investigation, but no, no arrests or suspects at this time. Lieutenant, maybe uh, you can help me or, you know, what I'm going about, you know, paraphrases. It's my understanding that we have, um, I guess, this is just one of those things when you have, you know, gambling in your town. We have situations where, you know, um, a fella, they go out and spend all his money gambling, you know, losing, and then, you know, go back home and, you know, tell the wife, oh, I, I didn't. I didn't blow all this money gambling. I was robbed. Um, yes. Is that kind of a um, hasn't something like that happened in the past? That's why we may have a little bit of a jaundiced eye when we get a report. Yes, I, I agree. I, I can think of uh, cases over the years that I've handled that are very similar. And uh, honestly, uh, I'm a little skeptical about our victims' claim on this one personally. Um, for the very reasons that you mentioned. And uh, I believe our detectives feel the same. And uh, they said they're still looking into it. Um, so, but I'll, I'll keep you posted on what the final verdict is it, on it, so. Thanks, sir. All right, appreciate it, thank you. Yeah, I was kind of wondering what, what the false, you know, written that in there. I think that's all the questions I have. Thank you. Mr. Yeah. Um, I was thinking I had to go home and come up with a story there. Um, why would you invent such a, you know, yeah. if, if that's an event? And it's now, seriously, um, we can substantiate that he didn't win that money at Abner's. Does the town have any recourse to get uh, fine him or try to go for a cost of the officer's time involved in that? Well, what, what will happen is if, if the detectives determine that he made any false statements, uh, he'll pick up a criminal charge, most likely for false statement to police officer. Um, that's usually the route we go when we get that kind of situation. So, um, so yeah, if, if in fact we determine that he did lie or he did make this whole thing up, then uh, he's almost certainly going to pick up a criminal charge for that. Certainly would want to discourage people trying to do that. Uh, and real quick, back on the fast stop, the perpetrator, is he a resident of the town? Um, I don't believe so. I, I'll have to get back with you on uh, exactly where he's from, but I don't think so. The only thing I can say is I'm pretty sure the victim is local. Um, Mr. Booz is the victim. Uh, he's local, but I don't know if, I don't even know that he lives within the incorporated town of Chesapeake Beach. Um, but I don't believe the suspect is local. But I can get that. That's what I read in the newspaper. But that's where... so anyhow, I didn't see a question, Greg. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you. All right. Uh, Larry. No additional questions. Continue to thank you for your service. Thank you. A couple things. Uh, first of all, thank you and thanks to Holly for sending uh, that the report um, about the fast stop incident. Uh, it's another one of those cases where people ask you about it. So um, having that information is very helpful. I also I can't lie. I mean, I read it like reading a train wreck. I couldn't, I took, captured half my lunch hour. But yeah. uh, well, I appreciate getting that information out um, as, as quickly as you did. Um, one follow up on the uh, robbery question. Uh, the, is it really the case that Someone, we, and, and this is just my own ignorance, so uh, it, it, is it really the case that you win money up to $1,000 and there's absolutely no record of that? You, you actually walk out of a, a back casino with cash? Um, I'm honestly not sure um, as to how that works. If the, if you and that, I both have had the same luck at the casino, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've, I've rarely gambled, so I really, I've never gambled there, so... Uh, I really don't know the answer to that, but it's certainly something that the detectives can cooperate and I'm sure they have. I just don't have the details on it. They basically told me that they are skeptical um, and they found some inconsistencies in, in his statement. So, but that, that's a good question. I really don't know how that works. If you, you know, win a pot of cash, do you walk out or do they take your information and report you, uh, you know, your earnings? Your winnings or not, I don't know. 
might be of some help, uh, not because I ever won any money, but because I worked for the Treasury Department. And there is a certain uh, number, it was it used to be 1500 back in my day, but I'm sure it, it's higher, where the IRS uh, re requires the business to give you a 1099-G G for gambling. So if you win in excess to that certain amount, yes, there'd be a record for it, but the folks that went under the amount, no, there's no record. It's just cash in hand. Apparently, none of us ever won any money over there. You know, and I don't gamble either, so I doubt I'm going to. But, uh, okay, thanks, Charlie. Um, one final question on the arrest. Uh, Mrs. Creek, uh, I, don't, I don't know her, um, but I, I find that a little, I guess, sad. Is there a facility or a way to deal with that differently than taking your time and actually arresting her? Yes, um, that's a great question. I could tell you that um, our time dealing with Mrs. Creek was uh, a learning experience for me. It, it was actually quite an ordeal um, because we, um, throughout my career, we've dealt with people that have had mental health issues and things like that. And um, what we normally do is we'll get a, a phone call and it'll be something incoherent from someone with a mental health issue and we'll go out there and we'll make sure that they're okay physically. And then um, usually we'll clear it and say the person's fine and then we're out of there. But with Ms. Creek, um, we received hundreds of calls from her. I mean, she would call 911 uh, sometimes three, four, five times a day with lots of outrageous claims. It was usually something of a religious nature um, you know, something biblical that was going on at her house. And it got to the point where uh, we just decided we couldn't continue um, on that path and that something had to be done. So what we find, in, and obviously this woman doesn't belong behind bars, you know, she has a mental health issue and we didn't want to arrest her for abusing the 911 system. So what we started doing is every time we went there, we would either reach out to Adult Protective Services and follow a, a referral with them, or we would uh, reach out to the Calvert County Health Department and make them aware that we were out there again. Um, and um, they've been very helpful. Even our mobile crisis team will come out and speak with her. But um, we finally got some advice that the best thing to do actually was to put a few criminal charges on her and let the courts do a mental health evaluation on her, which is what happened. Finally, um, it got to a point where there's a neighbor who um, lives directly next to her and they heard a scream from their child and they came in and Mrs. Creek was standing in their living room and just walked right into the house. So what we did is we, we hit her with a burglary charge for that and uh, also trespassing. And uh, that actually was very helpful because um, the courts got involved and they're not, they obviously are not gonna find her competent to stand trial for a criminal charge, but she is currently in a state mental facility right now. And uh, she will be there at least until December. And at that time they will reevaluate her if they can get her leveled out on her medications where she's fit to be released, but um, we literally responded to the, her house hundreds of times. And um, so it was a learning experience for me. Uh, I think we've resolved it at least for now and we'll see what happens in December. Lieutenant and Charlie, um, I think probably given that we're getting, we're getting a little bit into you know, too much detail about this individual's case, uh, if you want to more information, maybe an offline call to yeah, we'll and it would be followed appropriately. Okay. Well, thank you for the information. It does make me feel better um, and proves once again that you guys uh, know your job very well. So thank you for your service and uh, all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Lieutenant. Hello, Joyce Valerie. You and I talked on the phone uh, a few weeks ago. Yeah. And so what we talked about was I had a resident um, issue a concern with me that regarded an accident at Mares and Bayside Road 261. And it ended up being at the inter intersection, that specific accident. But the resident's real concern 
was the fact that there's not any do not enter sign on Mirrors Avenue. You know where the island is, so he had witnessed a few people um, going the wrong way on that east-west road and then having to back up to then go on the right side, the proper side of that split island, you know, little road there on Mirrors. And so um, the residents suggested maybe we needed do not enter signs there, you know, so that people did not turn in properly. Um, and so I called Doc, um, Lieutenant Hollinger to talk about this, and he was going to look at what sort of accidents, if any, have been reported there. I don't expect many accidents because I think people just self-correct their driving back up slowly and then go into the proper lane. But uh, any follow-up, Lieutenant Hollinger? <clears throat> Yes, yeah, so I did a search of all uh, crash reports that we've taken at that intersection in the last two years. And um, surprisingly for last year, I only found two. I really thought it would be a few more than that. Um, now for this year, we have had three that we've taken crash reports um, already. Um, the first was in January, that was a pedestrian struck and the uh, driver of the striking vehicle said that they had sun in their eyes and you know, which resulted uh, in them not seeing the pedestrian. Um, then we had another one in, in May, which was a driver uh, trying to make a left turn and not yielding um, on Harbor Road. And then we had most recently one on July 1st, which was a very similar case where we had a driver uh, trying to make a left turn and not yielding to oncoming traffic. So that's five in the last two years that I could find. Um, and I, I feel that that's really not, a, not very many considered. I've actually sat there and watched the lights turn and, and so on and just try to assess that intersection and what's going on. And it's just amazing the volume of, of traffic through there. It's gotta be thousands of cars a day and um, so um, even the accidents that we've had, I couldn't find any with any serious injuries. Um, but it does seem that the, the main problem that I could find is, you know, um, there for each, no matter which direction you're going in that intersection, you can make a left turn just by yielding to oncoming traffic. And um, I think some people just um, misjudged oncoming traffic and uh, maybe turn in front of someone. So. But uh, yeah, it couldn't hurt to have a, a sign um, coming up mirrors. So, you know, no one takes the, uh, goes the wrong way on a one-way street, but I didn't find that that was a contributing factor to any of the accident reports that I found. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for looking into it. Thank you for our conversation that day. I really appreciate it. Lieutenant Hollinger got back to me within like, what seemed like minutes. And, you know, I just left the text, you know, like no rush. Um, but I do think you might just want to keep a half an eye out. It's not so much the accidents at the intersection, but it's anyone that's going the wrong way on the one-way street and then trying to correct themselves. Um, we just want to be aware of it and possibly consider putting up do not enter signs or something there, um, a wrong way or something. Um, I'm not a traffic engineer, but I you know, just want to bring that resident complaint forward and make sure that y'all heard about it. And thank you. Uh, Lieutenant Hollinger, really appreciate it. Sure, thank you. And thank you, Lieutenant. Um, North Beach Volunteer Fire Department, we've read the report as always. The Please uh, funnel him to, to, to Larry and, and he'll uh, and, and he'll he'll respond. Um, Mayor's report. Well, first I want to say one thing that I missed is seeing you guys and your faces and reactions while we're talking. It was very difficult to, it was just very difficult at times. I think everybody probably experienced the you know, same thing, but um, it's, been, it's been 17 months and we're, um, you know, we're, we're seeing our way out of this. And uh, I, my report is going to be about thanks and uh, appreciation. Uh, first, I want to thank the citizens for their many uh, sacrifices and support for getting vaccinated and keeping us safe. I wanna thank the volunteer boards and committees 
for staying engaged to keep this town moving forward during this pandemic. I'm going to thank the town staff. Um, I thank our leadership team for, for keeping the bar raised high and for working 724 for, for the last 17 months. The rank and file did likewise and continued to provide world-class services to our town citizens. These men and women of our town, our folks, made many untold sacrifices on a daily basis. And I thank each of them. And, I, and I, I'll speak for, for the council here. I, I thank each of you. We thank each of you from the bottom of our hearts. It really kept us going. Um, last, but certainly not least, um, I wanna thank the town council. Um, in my opinion, when our public service is all said and done, safely guiding our town through a global pandemic may very well be your greatest achievement. This separates you from all those who came here before you. And thank you. It's been an honor to serve with you. Individually, Eric and Valerie both served as our vice presidents during this you know, pandemic. And among many other, other things were of great assistance to me and staff when we were developing emergency COVID budgets. That was a first, an emergency pandemic budget. Who'd have thought that, right? They don't teach that in school, by the way. Um, Charlie, um, your continued focus on the need for exercise, walking, biking, making sure our citizens understood to get outdoors and exercise as we were locked in. It was very important and I thank you, sir. Larry, I don't even know where to start with Larry. You know, while serving as a first responder at the North Beach Volunteer Fire Department, Larry let me hire him as an unpaid town staff member. Uh, for the better part of 2020, Larry, Holly, and I zoomed in on, in total, hundreds of meetings at the federal, state, and, and county level. He signed up for one. Ten months later, <laughs> I gave him a break. Um, not only did Larry not seek, not at one time seek any credit, he didn't mention it once when he campaigned for election. Not once did he, did he do that. And I applaud you for that, sir. Greg, thank you for keeping our businesses in the loop, letting them know that you and the town were here to help. And Lord knows that they needed help and Lord knows we gave it to them and everybody is getting out of it now. So I thank you, sir. And lastly, Keith, I thank you for your focus on public health, all different types, mental, opioid abuse, you name it. Most don't know this, but back when the, the, the pandemic started, Keith had uh, teamed up with, with Dr. Schisler to ensure food for school children, not only at, at Beach, but in this end of the county. Just another un, unsung hero, untold story, but when the time came, he, he stepped up and I applaud you for that. So I actually, and, and y'all did many, many, many more things. I don't think I'm limited you know, to that. I was just trying to you know, you know, categorize something. You know, and I do, I think your, your, your support, as a team for us moving forward and knowing the goal was to get out of this safely, not to be on a pedestal and score points or this or there. And it was an election year and y'all never even made that an issue at all. We just wanted to get this town out of this thing safely and we're, we're almost there. So I'll stop at that. It's been an honor serving with you. Thank you. You're welcome. Next. Introduce and vote on resolution R21-7, a resolution of the Town Council of Chesapeake Beach clarifying the definition of tourist home, allowing short-term rentals as a permitted use with conditions in the commercial and maritime zoning district. Is there a motion? Second, Second. with comment. Yeah, I'll, I'll have, of course, I'll have discussion. Um, Bowery? I'll we'll start with you since we ended up. I'm just gonna go uh, through things to ensure that we have clarity. Um, number one, who, who am I asking you, you Pat? Or, um, I didn't hear the clue. Um, does this resolution actually add the definition to 290-43 or is an ordinance required to actually add the definition to our code? I, I think these are questions you probably can ask the attorney. Okay, thanks. Yeah, or how? Todd, 
Um, does the resolution that's written, does this resolution actually add the definition to section 290-43 or is an ordinance requested? No, it, required? It, 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 will, it will not add to the ordinance. But what this, uh, in essence, is trying to do is create an understanding as to the definition of that um, term tourist home, because that is an undefined term. So in other words, another to try to move forward, at least uh, with, with it was the idea that indeed that would be def uh, defined and uh, there will be future definitions. And you are correct that um, that will have to be some type of ordinance or uh, go eventually go before the um, uh, planning commission with regard to the comprehensive plan. One of those two one of those two avenues is where it's ultimately going to have to end up. We're just adding one definition in this case to section 290-43. Wouldn't it uh, be just if we agree on this one definition to add this one definition to his own ordinance and get that off the table? I, I apologize. I'm, the, the, uh, the sound isn't coming through real good. Can I ask you to repeat that, please? Absolutely. For the case of clarity, would it not possibly make sense? Since this is one and only one definition that we're adding to section 290-43, wouldn't it be more prudent to just have an ordinance in front of us next month adding this one definition? My concern here, and I'll try to be clear to everyone, is in no way do I want this definition or uh, to be mixed up with any other ordinances changing Section 290 that may come before us as part of the comprehensive plan, which we vote on separately, the planning and zoning map, which we vote on separately, and the ordinances that are changed due to those two votes. And so I support this as a definition. What my concern is and what I really don't understand is why we're not just introducing an ordinance next month with this one definition, adding it to our code um, via an ordinance. I just think we ought to consider keeping this stuff as clean as possible. And so what I would not want to see is a series of definitions that might be pertaining to changes that might come through the comprehensive plan through the planning and zoning map, and through that change ordinance for Section 290, um, I want to keep these issues as separate as possible. And so although I do support this, I don't think this is the most efficient or expedient way um, to actually just add one definition to our code. I think we could have introduced an ordinance uh, in September and uh, had a public hearing in October and voted it after the public hearing and added this one simple definition. So just so the public understands what my fear is, I, I am fearful that we're going to start confusing issues or wrapping things up together that do not belong together. In my humble opinion, the comprehensive plan and short-term rentals are two separate issues. And so understand my fear. Um, I think this could have been done much easier as an ordinance introduced in September and actually affixed to our code with a clarifying language in uh, October through a vote in a public hearing is appropriate. Um, that's my comment on that. Actually, that was, that was a question. I was waiting for you to give, give, to, to, to give Todd a chance to answer your question. Uh, Todd? Well, you know, with regard to addressing our fear, I mean, absolutely. That that it becomes the discretion of council as to how they uh, how you would want to handle that. I mean, there is absolutely nothing to to uh, to stop the council from moving forward with a ordinance, uh, the presentation of the ordinance at some point in the future. But uh, I think you you address the concern in your comments yourself in that if something was drafted in September uh, and voted on in September, if and that happened. And that it was actually, you know, went through with a uh, uh, to be um, uh, voted on in October, 
now you're looking at something that's more further down the road. The purpose of this resolution was trying to address something fairly quickly and, uh, and to get some type of understanding as to what this undefined term was. And that's really what the purpose of it. But, uh, but if council wanted to do an ordinance, you know, with that timetable, that is completely at the council's discretion. And there is absolutely nothing that can stop, it, stop them from doing that. Uh, the, the purpose of this is to try to address this issue that's kind of hanging right now uh, to so at least somebody has some type of idea where they are right now uh, to be further addressed in the future. I understand. Um, and, and I mean, I'll move on, but just my concern is that this resolution may define it from a working perspective, but if a resident actually opens up section, the code on the internet and goes to section 29043 after this resolution passes, the definition for tourist home will not be in that list. Um, so it might be a working document, but it's not going to be in our code. And so a resident couldn't find it. Um, and so uh, that's, that's my comment and that's my concern is that I think rather than just saying how we're functionally doing it, um, is fine and dandy, and this might be how Christy Kubiak implements it, but the fact that someone opens our code after this resolution passes, they still will not see a definition, and I think that's problematic, and that's my comment. Thank you. Well, I have no further comments. No further comments. I would say that I was coming to the meeting with the full intention of voting against this resolution. Um, I'd be glad to see the Commissioner Brown's suggestion was added. Um, that was just enough for me. I was still a little reluctant, but um, it was just enough for me to, to um, want to be in support of this resolution. I've run on both times I run, I run on advancing town business. That's important to me. Uh, I'm not interested in trying to get caught up in red tape. I am in favor, reluctantly, of the revised resolution. I have no questions for Todd. Uh, and I understand with this resolution, we're giving direction to planning and zoning. We're trying to work our way through this a little bit, um, give them some guidance down the road. I hope that uh, when they time comes and they're looking at this code, that uh, we really want to make it crystal clear that, that if our position is short-term rentals are not allowed in particular parts of the community, I mean, really, we got to make sure how we can is a neon sign. We don't want people to make mistakes. We got to help them the best we can. Uh, we don't want them. To, we don't want them. It just seems to um, for short-term rentals to not be allowed because they're not mentioned in the use. Um, that's kind of what we have, I think. And maybe that's not enough. Maybe we've really got to come up with some language that just explicitly says, look, these things aren't allowed in these areas. Uh, but that's, that's, that's a conversation for down the road a little bit. Um, uh, you know, some of these comments here were geared towards this original resolution. Um, and some of these things I'm going to say, um, I do say with the utmost respect for this chamber and, and, and this body and, and as an elected official, um, I do feel like I've got to do everything I can to um, be the best representative that I can be. Um, the um, I know that when we had our work session, the, the definition was one of the items that we had discussed. Um, and I understand why we're kind of carving out a little space here just for this definition. Uh, so we know there's other details we've got to work through with some of those things that uh, were discussed during the work session. Um, I'm, in, I'm okay with that. Um, we are advising planning and zoning on definitions, but not whether we want to discuss expanding short-term rentals. We are trying to direct unambiguous short-term rental definitions in the code. 
something that's clear to the lay person, not something that we need to tie to kind of back into and understand fully. Uh, generally speaking, the, the, the short-term rental matter, it's a one-page variance since it's been a very pedestrian issue for our neighboring town. This has been an ongoing matter for us, and we all have our opinions about these things, but it uh, seems that, that our town needs a legion of paid professionals to tell us why we can't consider it, among other things. Just in comparison, it's just a broad overview. Um, it seems that we're asking pl uh, planning and zoning to include the use, uh, well, it, it is included, the short-term rental, it's my understanding short-term rentals are, are allowed in commercial and the maritime. Uh, Areas and we needed to clarify the uh, vacation home or tourist home definition here to help that part out. Um, I know some of that was born uh, from uh, Vice President Favre's efforts, uh, which I commend. Um, as I still feel is partially ambiguous. Um, if we're going to clarify it, we should make sure that uh, again that it's, it's crystal clear wherever we're looking for the lay person that they know these things are not allowed in, in particular areas. Uh, we can say buyer beware, but let's try to help be a little more um, conspicuous uh, about that code. Um, so um, I've changed my opinion, and I'm, I'm in support of this resolution. Um, moving forward, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I have no comment. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, so for those who either took part in, you or watched our, our work session, uh, last week, uh, you saw we went through a different way to try to resolve this this aspect of, of the issue. And when we came out of that, we had a, a really great discussion, a lot of great ideas, uh, but when we came out of it, uh, it was clear that uh, trying to solve one issue was potentially creating other issues for the other uses in that particular part of the code. So. I, I thought we had a, pan, a path forward there. Uh, I, I've come to think that we probably did the right thing not uh, moving forward with that ordinance. Uh, I would agree with my colleague. We do need an ordinance, and we need to clear this up, uh, and that's fine. Uh, this resolution, uh, as been, has been stated, does provide a clear interpretation, which has been the interpretation of the town, uh, of where short-term rentals are approved and, and how someone who as a property and the desire can uh, pursue that that commercial endeavor uh, in, in those two zones. So uh, I'm appreciative and supportive of this resolution, uh, but I would I would agree uh, there, there's more work to be done. We, we need to clarify this in the code. So the code is updated by appropriately, uh, but for the time being, the resolution does provide clarity to how short-term rentals are viewed town where they're approved and ultimately how a president could, uh, or could uh, pursue that commercial endeavor. So I, I do approve this. All right. I will support this and I appreciate the, all the work that everyone's done on uh, this issue of trying to, trying to come up with a, a practical solution down in the enforcement. Thank you. All those in favor, in favor, please say aye and raise your hand. Aye. 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 Passes by the one. Okay, uh, reports, uh, planning and zoning. Um, I don't believe that, that Larry's on the call, but the vice president may be on the call, I'm not sure. Lori on the call? Uh, yes, yeah. Mayor, I'm on the call. Lori. Okay, I ask that the council if they have any questions of, of your report, and I'll begin with Gary. Do you have any questions of? Uh, no questions in the report. Uh, thank you, Lori, and, and, and to all your. Uh, colleagues on the commission for all the work you guys are doing. Yeah. I do have no questions, uh, and I'll echo the thanks. Appreciate it. Yeah, Lori, thanks for um, being here this evening. And um, all the time that you folks have been running some marathon meetings, uh, multiple meetings per month, I, I, that's what is expected. Um, Looking forward to uh, progress and as the fall arrives, taking a look at some draft versions of this uh, vehicle. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Larry. I want to thank you as well for your time, Larry. It's really appreciated. You're, you're definitely one of the volunteers that I was speaking of earlier. Larry. Uh, 
Uh, I know <clears throat> Mr. Brown's not on, but I wanted to offer my congratulations and or condolences to him on being reelected for a second term. <clears throat> and uh, second, um, as noted in the report, uh, the town's economic development committee has offered comments to planning and zoning on the drafts of the comprehensive plan, and we stand ready to help uh, discuss that further if you'd like. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just echo the thanks for the hard work. Uh, I'm very much looking forward to getting a draft, but uh, appreciate the effort. Yeah, having a, Lori, having a, listen to all these meetings um, over the past 15 months and before this, um, I am really impressed with the level of effort that y'all are putting forward. And uh, y'all are to be commended. I mean, this has not been easy. And, um, I'm most heartened by the fact that a majority of your votes that occur on various issues are unanimous as you go through this comprehensive plan. Something I don't want to lose sight of. I do have just one question, um, and you may or may not be able to answer it. Um, do you and the Planning and Zoning Commission feel comfortable with the schedule that you set forth that we can uh, have the comprehensive plan, the Planning and Zoning Map? And all associated ordinances to us within the moratorium. Which ends in well, Yeah, so um, council on voting, really the, the progress is driven by um, Chris. So um, he's given us uh, the whole plan except for the implement, implementation chapter. Um, depending on how that comes out and how, you know, how many, um, I guess, concerns we find will determine how fast we can get through it. I know that, um, the, you know, with the 2010 plan, I think the actual development came out a little bit differently than people expected. And we, I think everybody really wants to avoid that this time. And so um, we have been, as he says, very deliberative. Um, Am I confident? I think the timeline right now says we're going to have something in September with the zoning map. I don't know that I'm. I don't know that I'm confident about that because we haven't seen the zoning map yet. Um, but hopefully, you know, if we can get everything, we can go faster. So. Um, I know Chris is on vacation now, and he'll get back, and I'm sure he'll get right to it, and. And then we'll go through everything, and and we're we're going to work as fast as we can without, you know, we really just don't want to leave our code wide open. Um, so I know Larry's committed to to going through the whole plan and putting forth something that we've actually read and approved, and and he's doing a great job and being very thorough. And as a citizen and as a commissioner, I very much appreciate that. Um, and uh, while I'm here, I just want to take the time because I always forget in my meetings to echo thanks on behalf of our board to you guys for your support um, in allowing the time to have these conversations because we all, I think, think they're really important and we really want to, you know, do the best we can to get it right. And in, in the end, you know, Chris is going to be the key to that because he's the one with the expertise. Um, but being able to discuss things and recommend and look into things is helpful, hopefully, and gives us a better chance of getting, you know, what's good for the town. So hopefully, I mean, I know that doesn't answer your question, but that's the best answer that I have. <laughs> if you, if you, you know, just communicate with anyone that you need to, with the commission or whatever, if you have any fears about not getting it to uh, the town council in time. Um, I've listened to all your meetings, and I know the number of unanimous folks. I know just how hard y'all are working, and so y'all are to be commended. Just communicate with us, the mayor, Holly, whomever, if you have any fears or doubts about meeting the deadline. And uh, um, there's no way to ever want to rush it because y'all are doing a great job. And I just want to thank you. Um, and thank the rest of the commission. So that's all my time. Thank you. And thank you, Laurie, again. <laughs> uh, 
Board of Appeals, no hearing was held. Uh, key box, uh, John Baker was on the call around from Hill Hey, John, how you doing, bud? Any, anything to work out, sir? John, you're muted. Um, oh. You just put yourself back on mute. <laughs> John, you're on mute. Okay, on mute. Am I on now? There you go. We can hear you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, yesterday, John Castro and Jay Berry uh, collected and uh, prepared samples uh, <clears throat> of oysters and fish to send to our laboratory to determine uh, if we had any uh, EFASs uh, of any significance. Uh, secondarily, Apparently, the <clears throat> Chesapeake Bay Foundation uh, is actively involved in helping us uh, to restore the old rock reef, and they'll be planting 100 uh, oyster balls, uh, reef balls uh, on the reef, uh, a little bit north of our normal uh, planting area. So it looks like <clears throat> someday in the near future, 2025, 2030, 2040, in that range, we will actually be able to restore the old rock reef to what it was before it was harvested in 1970. There is no action yet uh, from the uh, CBAR, from uh, CHESPAX as to whether or not there's going to be uh, field trips. Apparently, CHESPAX is on vacation this month. And so we should hear in October, in August, whether or not we're going to do anything. That's about it. Good talking to you. It'd be a pleasure. Uh, very soon. First of all, thank you, John Castro and Holly, for sharing the results of, as I mentioned earlier, the Water Reclamation Treatment Plant Energy Management Report. The uh, Climate Change Advisory Group looks forward to working with the town staff to implement um, the third option that's discussed in there on the solar panels. For those who haven't seen the report, they looked at three different options, and it looked like the third option might be the most viable. And we uh, continue to encourage the plant staff to uh, maintain their efforts to reduce energy consumption at the plant. Uh, it's no secret that our water reclamation treatment plant is the largest single user of energy uh, within our town. Uh, not surprising that that's fairly typical for treatment plants um, across the country. On another note, uh, Climate Change Advisory Group recommends that the Columbus Field Revitalization Committee consider installing solar panels to reduce energy consumption at the facility as, as part of the um, items that you're considering as part of that project. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Don't go anywhere, EDC. No, oh, I'm sorry. Co-Chair Keith, any comments? I, I apologize. That's quite all right. Thank you, Larry. No comments. We'll do that to Greg on this one. I know. <laughs> EDC. <laughs> I'll get to co-chair Greg in a moment. <laughs> uh, let me just offer, thank you, Holly, for posting on the town website, the announcement of the Calvert County Department of Economic Development in-person job fair um, on Thursday, August 26th, uh, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Prince Frederick Volunteer Fire Department. Uh, this effort is intended to help local businesses fill vacant positions. Local businesses, um, are invited to register by August 18th on the county website. Uh, the county economic development is trying to help as much as they can uh, our local businesses. We know one of the uh, largest challenges almost all of them are facing is they just simply cannot find enough people uh, to staff uh, their businesses. On another note, uh, I really, as I mentioned earlier, really excited about the scheduled return of Taste the Beaches especially especially with the uh, planned inclusion of our town's famous fireworks displays that evening. And that is scheduled for Saturday, September 18th. Mark your calendars. And finally, uh, please remember that this Saturday, the day after tomorrow, starts the week-long Maryland Buy Local Challenge, during which we are all encouraged to support local farms and producers and buy local. So reach out to your local produce stands and uh, help them survive. Co-chair Greg. And brewery too. 
Thanks, Larry. Um, Do that by myself. Being ready. Yeah, I'll probably just add one that uh, we've had some modest outreach with uh, Town Hall um, the last couple months, just trying to figure out some easy w additional ways that we can aid local businesses. Um, I, there were some suggestions from one of the large businesses of some website improvements. I, I know that we're always on the outlook to improve things. And the, the stuff that we've got now is just uh, galaxies away from where we were just, it seemed yesterday. I, I'm an advocate of um, uh, technology for sure. Uh, and also worthwhile mentioning that uh, we've engaged a couple of the local businesses with uh, some of the potential uh, things that may be coming up regarding adequate public facilities, reinvest Maryland, uh, just trying to be all things considered, uh, not just, um, I don't know, placate's the right word. Um, you know, I want our businesses to know that we're listening to them and, and we are all things considered. Um, so, um, uh, and uh, hooray, taste the beaches. Let's go. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Crane team, Dr. Bodine. Uh, yes. So some updates. Um, first of all, um, we have uh, purchased the signage for sign replacement on the railway trail. You might have noticed that a lot of it was weather weathered and you couldn't read it and it was faded. So volunteer members went through and did an inventory and so we should be uh, getting those new signs in due time. Uh, so that's the first one is signage. So that's going to be delivered. The second is um, one of the signs that does exist but doesn't have the thing that it's pointing to is the Purple Martin House. If you go walk down to the T and you make a left right there on the corner, um, you'll see the sign um, for the Purple Martin House. So um, we had ordered one. Um, one of our volunteers, Sue, built it, you know, put it together. We're waiting on the pole. And then uh, I'll have to get with maybe Holly or someone in, or maybe one of the volunteers at our upcoming meeting on how we can actually uh, place that um, in the swamp. Um, might need to borrow public works or someone. Um, but we can come up with, with a solution, I have no doubt. Uh, Next, um, the pollinator guarding. So as you walk along the railway trail, you're walking towards, uh, make the rest right off the tee. Um, you get to the pollinator garden. Um, one of our volunteers has developed a plan for, its, uh, I'll say, refurbishment um, uh, to occur this fall. Um, so we're going to discuss that at our next meeting. Uh, you know, just have a discussion as to what it includes. Are we missing anything? Is there anything more that we think we might need? And uh, then we'll go about purchasing those, you know, that that those plants and such uh, for the pollinator garden. That'll be done um, this fall. Uh, finally, um, you might remember that we had a a, a bayfront cleanup um, June 5th. Coming out of that, me and a par uh, volunteer Ken um, started clipping vines between the boardwalk and the the bay itself. Uh, and what we were trying to do at that time was to save some of the trees, if you will. If you walk on that boardwalk and you look at the trees, you'll notice that they're covered by vines. They're covered by um, English ivy. They're covered by kudzu. They're covered by poison ivy. Um, you name it, and these trees were covered by it. Um, and so that little bit of effort that Ken and I did um, led to um, the team members um, I would say enthusiastically, but I'll say consistently um, and enthusiastically because um, it's been kind of hot um, going down through the boardwalk and uh, trying to actually save these trees, rescue these trees before they actually die. Uh, these are the trees mostly between the boardwalk and the bay. And so as you walk down there now, you'll see that a lot of the foliage on top of the trees is dying um, from where the vines are dying. And you can actually see some of the tree leaves actually, you know, starting to turn green once again. I did this with another volunteer, Kathleen, um, out there on the 17th Street um, stairway. There was a tree that was absolutely covered um, right next to it. And uh, in due time, um, whether it be through the green team efforts and a specific suggestions or through like a town council work session, we're going to have to figure out a way to control this kudzu 
because it grows at a foot a day and it's like ridiculous. Um, so we can continue trying to eradicate it, but I have concerns about slope stability then as we try to eradicate it. So anyways, it's just something to think about, but I really, to see these folks out there volunteering at 7, 7.30 in the morning on Mondays is really quite heartwarming to see them trying to do their best to try to kind of like give these trees an, a second chance. And so I just want to commend their efforts. It's really quite heartwarming. And finally, our, our meeting, next meeting is um, at the, uh, I call them the pavilions. It's, it's the pav we have two sets of pavilions, one near Kelms Field, one near the water park. We meet on June 22nd, which is a Thursday at seven o'clock at the pavilions next to the water park, next to the, uh, the charging stations that were put in. So we'll be there Thursday, July 22nd, seven o'clock, and would love to have you all join us. And that's all I have. Thank you. Kellum's revitalization, Mr. Marsh. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, everybody has the uh, first report. Um, the, uh, we had our first um, public meeting regarding um, this committee. Uh, it was held at Kellum's Field uh, at seven o'clock this past June 29th. Um, uh, I felt that it was modestly attended. Um, I think, I'm not sure. There might have been a dozen folks there, maybe something along those lines. Um, in short, um, the committee established some tenants as its guiding principles, uh, which was important. We had a roundtable brainstorm ideas, uh, ideas that were discussed. There were a lot of ideas, and we are concurrently continuing outreach. We want ideas to come from everywhere. Uh, use different vehicles to bring ideas in, and there are a lot of them out there. They're not all, not all of them would make it um, to a concept plan. That's, um, but all are worth discussing. Uh, and I guess really of note, uh, the meeting culminated with the group agreeing there was enough information available to engage a professional consultant. So I think we're waiting on direction from town hall now uh, regarding what the next step is there. Uh, and also, um, I know that uh, um, I had uh, we had an email with with Holly, and uh, we all also want to concurrently continue outreach um, to the community through the happenings, and then have the that that little map that I we had provided uh, available, just to pull ideas in, just everything, and let's just throw it in here. And then uh, I think we had a we had a pretty good idea who we want to be on uh, our identity, which was important to establish before we meet a consultant. Uh, and on that, Charlie, do you have any questions or um, comments, please? I think your report summarizes it pretty well. If I could just um, add a little bit to item number one, why we felt that was important. Um, going all the way back to the beginnings of the walkable community group, um, Derek sort of, uh, well, I guess we worked together on it, but sort of came up with this idea that if we had a set of metrics against which we could, we could judge any, any ideas that people brought or any actions that we wanted to take or any, uh, funds that we wanted to, to expend that we could measure it against, uh, those, those principles and goals. And that seemed to be a good way, uh, to get these in front of people. So they know what we're thinking. So someone doesn't come out and say, well, why, why were you doing this? And we can say, well, this meets goal number D. Uh, because it provides this and that. So I encourage people to look at that, uh, both both among us, but also uh, folks out in the public, because um, they will drive uh, the decisions that we make, and we have no shortage of good ideas. And uh, Kellum's is open, uh, which is noted in the email blasts, and I would love to see people um, use it a little bit more. So make sure people are aware that it's uh, open. And solar is a great idea. That's it. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, Twin Beaches Opioid Abuse Awareness Coalition. Keith. All right. Thank you, Mayor. So we continue to um, make our plans for the August 1st event, uh, Candlelight Vigil at North Beach Boardwalk. Um, August 1st is, uh, oh, goodness, recovery. I'm sorry, I'm blanking out on it. August 31st is... Uh, uh, did I say first? I didn't hear it. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. August 31st. Um, so September is recovery month, and uh, August 31st is overdose awareness day. And, um, you know, the, 
as I've mentioned previously, the county has expanded the, the Light Up the Beaches event to the entire county. That We did the Light Up the Beaches last year. And um, so they are promoting that throughout the county. And uh, they are providing, I think, 1,200 uh, purple light bulbs to whomever wants them. We'll be giving them out here at the town hall and North Beach, as well as the Sneeds and um, on specific dates, and we're gonna have more information. I think that's already been advertised, and, but we'll have more information about the event coming up. Um, on the evening for the candlelight vigil, and I have to, you know, of course, give a shout out to the entire committee for all the work that they have done, but especially to, to Sandy Mattingly, who's really been uh, doing the lion's share of, of, of work on this. So we really appreciate that, but, um, we are going to be having several speakers there that night, um, including our illustrious mayor will be there, as will Mayor Benton from North Beach, uh, Captain Payne from the Calvert County Sheriff's Office, who's been in, involved with uh, opioid awareness, and uh, Senator Michael Jackson will also be there to speak. Um, and so we, we're planning the event to be about two hours long, starting around seven o'clock. We'll have the speakers um, there'll be a reading of the, of the names, and then we're going to have, the plan is at least to have um, shoes lined up along the, uh, um, the pier there, and, and with tags indicating father, mother, brother, son, who has been lost um, to this. Um, we're asking folks in the community if they would like to have their loved one's name read publicly. Uh, we're going to do that towards the end. And then it's supposed to be somewhat of a solemn event where you walk down the uh, pier and you're able to take a look and kind of remember uh, folks who have been lost to this uh, um, terrible thing of the opioid uh, epidemic. And um, anyway, and then that will just culminate then at, at around o'clock. And so um, we hope you can be there. We will have more information out there. We'll also have some resource providers who will be there to give out information. The county is also planning quite a few events, naloxone training events at some of the community centers uh, where they'll be handing out uh, more information uh, uh, about, you know, the services that they provide here in the county. And uh, let's see, rain date. If... Uh, be September 7th is kind of what we're planning. We do still need to um, go over the logistics with North Beach and be sure we got everything straight, but uh, they have given us permission to do this. And so we're pretty excited about it as it's coming together. And I'm just trying to see if there was anything else in here that I just wanted to um, highlight. Um, no, so again, you know, the Calvert Alliance Against Substance Abuse they are, this is really, you know, for the countywide, they're kind of planning the countywide event. And we're doing the candlelight vigil here as part of the Twin Beach Opioid Abuse Awareness Committee. And then, of course, the Calvert County Health Department is heavily involved in this as well, as are many other organizations. And, um, and the only other thing I'll just mention today is that um, once, you know, this event is passed, then we're going to start, I think the next big event will be the health fair that we're kind of planning for March. And so if any of you want to be involved in that, I'd like to definitely touch base with you, uh, Charlie, to talk a little bit more about from a walkable community perspective, if there's some you know, activities or, or something that we can do. That perspective, that would be great. And so with that, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, Charlie, Walkable Community Advisory Group. Yeah, so we did not meet last month. Um, we're in a, a phase right now where we're looking at how we can bring a number of the projects on our list kind of to reality. And that is a challenging process. Not, that, that's not the right way to put it. It's a process that doesn't just move quickly. Uh, and that is particularly true in the summer. Uh, and so we are... Um, continuing to try to move some of those things forward. And I, I don't have much else to report um, at this point. Thank you, sir. Um, no one finished or new business. Um, do we have any public comment at this time? Hey, uh, hey Pat, it's, it's Carl again, if I can get in the queue. I'll begin with Dr. Bodine. 
Hey, uh, oh, yeah, I'm just going to keep it really short. Um, it has been a very long 17 months, and it is so nice to be together. And uh, let me just say that um, being apart from you guys, uh, has it's made me aware of just how much I appreciate you all and just how much I've missed working with you all. And I feel so blessed to be in this room with you guys now. Thank you. Good to see you, Val. <laughs> Hello, Charlie. Pat, can Don't you hear get me? me choked up because that doesn't go well. I didn't but, say it was good to see you. I was going to say something similar. Walking in back into this office or into this uh, <laughs> chamber, it, it um, it's an emotional thing for for everyone, for me in particular, but for everyone, everyone no question. Thank, thank you very you much, much, the mayor, for those comments, uh, and to the staff for for the work uh, that everyone has done. Um, it is something that we'll look back on and not with, with a little bit of a different perspective, maybe than some people. Sure. Um, and then I, I hate to say this, I just want to put this out there. Um, we are open again. Things are, are opening. Uh, proceed with caution, I would say. Keep your eye on the news. Proceed with caution. Respect others who may not be vaccinated. Um, I certainly encourage everyone to get vaccinated, but there are people for various reasons, good and bad, that are not vaccinated. So if there's an opportunity to wear a mask or keep your hands clean, um, don't hesitate to do that. Proceed with caution. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Hello, hey, uh, hello. This it's, is uh, feels good to be back in person, even if it's still limited to council and staff. Look forward to hopefully sometime soon opening it back up and restoring all of our events. Uh, if you haven't heard, uh, there is a an event coming up for Dr. Sisler, principal at uh, Beach Elementary is retiring, and there's an event scheduled for Friday, August 27th at the firehouse just to acknowledge his, what is it, 49 years or something of service. And then I'm sure the mayor's going to comment on this, but there will be no meeting in August, correct? Correct. Thank you. Maybe. <laughs> I'm going to stop right here because we have somebody that, that needs to make a public comment, and I would just as soon get that. Hey, uh, th thanks, Pat. Can you hear me? Yes. Great, thanks. Yeah, this, this is Carl Horn again. Um, I, I want to put a little context behind my opening statement. Um, I've owned a, a single family residence in Richfield Station uh, since 2006. I'm the original owner, uh, paid for it, all those impact fees and, and that kind of stuff. So that's, that's why I'm very interested in this because I've, I've been in fact running that house and maintaining it for, for the past four years. But on that same topic, and I think why I was doing this during the public comment section is, is that I am, I am also very interested in, in the welfare of my tenants. And the water at my address there, it's in Green Spring Drive, is brown. And I'm at the very bottom of the sewer line. Now, I installed a whole um, water house water filter to try to solve that. And the water's so bad there now that within one week, the, the entire filter was red. And I, I would ask that the town would go ahead and take a look at that, maybe do increase. There, there's a blowout at the bottom actually in my driveway there, um, and it, but because it's untenable at this point. You know, I've, I've invested as much as I could but you know we want a livable community, and I would I would assume that would apply to um, to water as well. And I do know that my neighbors complained about a month ago, uh, and and nothing had happened. Um, and likewise, I called town hall yesterday. Um, when when they called town hall, allegedly town hall said that um, they would put in a work order, but couldn't guarantee when it was done. Uh, sounds like a systemic a systemic issue, and I would ask that the uh, the town would take a look at that, uh, especially since I'm um, towards the, the bottom of the uh, of the water line there. Thank you. And uh, you will hear from staff and tell your wife I said hello. I haven't seen her in a while. Yes, sir. I will. Uh, I know um, there are, I don't know how many um, residents that, that, based on the way the water line is and the sediment will lay in there, especially being at the bottom end of a, of a, of a line like Carl appears to be, 
it may be warranted, um, it identifies particularly problematic areas to try to get them some additional flushing, you know, at those areas. Um, the, uh, uh, I love this town. I love our government. And, and, um, uh, it, I, I am, have always been on board uh, uh, with our mayor's strong arrangement. Uh, and, and that's going to continue. Um, <clears throat> Section 7-15 of the town code. The mayor and town council shall share final authority and responsibility over all affairs of the town. Um, goes on to say that the mayor shall be the chief agent of the town council. And somewhere else I might say is the president, and that's cool. Um, small town like ours, um, you would expect there to be a mayor. Uh, we visited St. Michael's over the weekend, and they've just got five commissioners, and everybody's got their different structures, different things that they like to do. Um, I think you'd be hard-pressed to find anybody uh, that lives here in town. Um, to think otherwise, you, know, you wouldn't, I don't know if you could think about Chesapeake Beach um, without having a mayor um, who, who is, is our leader. Um, that being said, at times, um, and it's not just during this tenure, but at times I've felt that the mayor and town hall are deciding for us what are some very important policy decisions. Um, and, and it's tough because being responsible, but not having enough of a say on some of these matters really puts us in a tough spot. Um, it really should be unacceptable, and it probably is. Um, but I'm looking forward. Uh, I'm, I'm a natal guy. I think that the folks that, that know me and that have talked to me, I am not all or nothing. Um, I'm somebody that uh, I'm a transition person, uh, and I'm very patient um, as long as we're kind of tracking in, in the general direction. I, the general, that, usually that makes me happy enough. Uh, but that being said, that um, I think it's important that when the town is faced with some of its most, particularly some of its most important decisions, that council really needs to be brought in um, more so um, than, than I have seen. And, and the last segment, four years, was more than it was the, 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 the segment before that. And I would, I, this, we're about, I'm a half year into this segment. And again, I, I, I kind of feel that that needle is moving a little bit, uh, but it's going to take all of us to, to want that. And we should want that. Um, so um, on that, thank you. And good night. Thank you. Um, Vice Pre <laughs> I will call you Keith. <laughs> all right, Keith. All right. No, thank you, Mayor. I, I just would like to echo some of the thoughts that, we, that have already been shared tonight, and it's really nice to be back. It's good to see you all in person. I must admit, I was had a little bit of trepidation. I think this is my first in-person meeting since since you know COVID started. So, uh, but I, you know, it worked out really well. So that's great. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, it's good. To, good again. Good to see you all. You all take care, and and everyone out there, you too. Uh, stay safe. Thanks. Thank you. Mr. Vice President. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, yeah, I, I too, you know, want to say it's great to be back in town hall uh, with everyone tonight. Uh, I do have an announcement to make though, speaking of getting choked up. This actually may be my last public meeting as well. Uh, I very recently accepted a new job within the federal government. And I say very recently, I, I established my start date six hours ago. It, that's how recent it is. Uh, and it will result in me relocating uh, to the Newport News, Virginia area. Uh, so I will be uh, having to step down at some point uh, soon. And, and I, I have uh, very mixed feelings about that. But my intent is to stay engaged uh, through the relocation process uh, as much as I can. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, those relocation uh, situations tend to drag on sometimes. So I, I may be, you know, here in, in September, but I wanted to announce that tonight and also uh, publicly. I wanted to thank all of you, uh, 
you know, this has been a, a truly remarkable group, five, five years, uh, the things that we've done, we've accomplished a lot. It's been a truly pleasure to work with all of you, including their staff, uh, fantastic staff, everyone who's here, who's on the call, um, our public. Uh, I, I really want to, uh, I really want to thank the Walkable Community Advisor Group, Amanda, Madeline, Jan, Teresa, Lori, Ed, and of course, Charlie. You know, when, when I leave, you know, I, I'm, I'm gonna think about, I, I really didn't think I was gonna get choked up this bad, but um, you know, the time that we all spent together, you know, working on that uh, master plan is, is really special to me and, and working, you know, with you all. Uh, in the capacity we did uh, very closely together for that long, uh, you know, through there was there was a lot of, uh, you know, we all experienced a lot during that time. And we really came out with a fantastic product for the town. And uh, I really, uh, I really, truly uh, treasure all that time that we spent as a group together to do that, uh, you know, as well as, as with our group. Uh, I, I was really, I really wanted to be here for the 261 sidewalk to be in. I may come back for it because it's been really a, a passion of mine for a long time. And, uh, you know, again, just, you know, Valerie, you mentioned earlier about, uh, you know, the significance of paying off long-term debt. I mean, that's just, that's so important to a town and, and, uh, you know, I'm glad just to be a part of that. Just, just a little part of that. Cause that's really, uh, you know, people aren't going to realize five, 10, 20 years from now, what that, what that means, you know, the things we did in the last few years, uh, what that's going to mean to them, uh, but it's, it's going to be huge. Uh, so that I, you know, it's, it's, it's been a true pleasure to work with all of you and, and, and we'll, we'll spend time offline, uh, you know, talking and, and I'll share, you know, more feelings with you guys, but uh, I just wanted to publicly thank everyone, everyone here, everyone on the call, everyone within the town, I never, I never had an ambition to do this, um, but I'm glad I did, and um, I'm going to miss you guys. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. Be, uh, be <laughs> the council lightning round is over, but but before we adjourn, um, I'm going to say a, a few words, and uh, if the council chooses to follow my lead, that would be great, and then we'll adjourn. Um, I'm, I'm happy for, for, for Derek and his family. I know that this is a very important move for, for family reasons. And as we all know, family comes first. Um, I will say that until he redomiciles, I don't intend to accept any resignation. And I, and I plan to keep, keep working you until the very end. I mean, that $3,000 a year, I plan to get a whole year's worth out of you, sir. I'm sorry. It's in the budget and I plan on getting it out of you. Please do. So, um, but I really want to, uh, you know, Thank Derek for you know his leadership, um, his counsel, his integrity, um, his patience as he as he mediates ways to to resolve issues. Um, after the first term, one of the citizens came up to me and said, um, "Pat says um, that favorite guy on your council, and you know, I figured it was him." He said, he, "He's something special." And that's exactly what I think about Derek. He's something special. So thank you, sir. Choose. You choose to do it afterwards and over a cold beer. That's good too. I'll probably do that. <coughs> probably a few. Um, needs to say I'm, I'm flabbergasted. Um, Derek, thank you for everything that you've taught me. Um, especially um, how to be steady and calm and not to have knee-jerk reactions. Um, it has been an honor and a blessing to work with you. And I am just shocked. And uh, you are leaving this town. It's a huge loss for this town. Great for your family. Thrilled for you. Um, but you said people won't realize um, what it means to get rid of the debt until 20, 30 years from now. 
your loss will linger for years um, because of how good you are. And Pat's right, you're special. And you are calm and intelligent. And I feel so lucky um, to have had the pleasure of working with you these past years. It has been awesome, just like you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Thank Valerie. you. I appreciate it. Mr. Fink. It's going to be hard to top that. Everything that Valerie said and two other things, um, I feel like there, you know, COVID is, is, an, is an, a slew of missed opportunities, and one of them is the opportunity to spend more time over a cold beer um, for everyone. But um, now, given the, uh, you know, your imminent departure, it's, it's more acute. So, and then the other is, you know, I echo what you said about walkable community. We, we have done serious work, and there is a legacy there that you can always possibly name it the Derek Favre Memorial Sun, or maybe one of the squares. We can give you one of the squares. I'm going to miss you, man. I'm, I'm speechless. Talk about not seeing this coming. Um, you had no clue. Uh, wish you all the best. Um, but you're leaving a huge empty spot to fill. So best of everything to you, my friend. Morris. Yeah, it's, um, I, I really can't add a whole lot to what has been said on um, the mayor's opening comments. And then we all feel the same way. I mean, these all of these comments could just as well come from any one of us. Um, irreplaceable is a word that comes to mind when I think about Derek Favre. And that's not just him, but it's also his family and what they've meant to the town, his family unit. Um, in a large part, I'm kind of going by off the cuff here, but in a large part, I think Derek is in a large part of our, our identity here. And that is going to carry forward. You know, the day it comes and you need to step away, the attitudes and, and some of the things that, that uh, the colleagues here have mentioned, um, we're going to carry that stuff forward. It will always be a part of us. Um, and I thank you for that. I uh, certainly want to hope to have a chance to, to thank your wife for sharing you with the town and <laughs> this group. Uh, we'll have time to enjoy more fellowship. I'll be looking forward to it. So um, we're looking forward to that. Thank you. Hey, Derek. Next door neighbor, Keith. <laughs> I know. Well, you know, it's been it's been wonderful, you know, working with you over the last five, almost six years now, sitting there next to you on the dais. Um, you know, I echo everything that's been said. Um, you have brought a lot of stability, a lot of great ideas, um, had a lot of discussions with you over various topics. And I really appreciate, you know, the time and the thought that you've put into, you know, all of these issues that we've discussed here. And, um, I just want to wish you, you know, the best on your new endeavors, and you will definitely be missed. And uh, this is only three other people in the room. I'm not going to short them. Holly Wall, mm -hmm. Sharon. I'm sorry. I know you don't want to speak. I'll I'll <laughs> let you hug him later. We'll, you work it out, you guys. Okay. <laughs> I would say it's been wonderful to work with you. You're kind of a conduit to a lot of different things and really have appreciated the time that you've spent with town staff just to flush through issues and make sure that we're mitigating everyone's concerns. So thank you. And all the best to you and your family. Thanks, Holly. Appreciate Mr. it. Treasurer. Derek, I think a lot of it's been said, but I want to thank you for your help. You've helped me grow in terms of my position and things I haven't thought about in a finance world before. So uh, appreciate that. Uh, it'd be a big miss from the town, but uh, I can hope that you'll still be in touch with us and uh, come back and see us. I do plan to do that. Thank, thank you, Dale. Eric, move to adjourn. 
Aye. Aye. Good night, everybody.